What should the LA Kings do with Pierre-Luc Dubois? We discuss that and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we are on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years of the Fox Sports Radio Network. Also co-host of the Puck Podcast. It's a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the last 17 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. On May the 6th, 2024, the LA Kings pulled off one of the biggest trades of the offseason by acquiring Pierre-Luc Dubois from the Winnipeg Jets for forwards Gabriel Velarde, Alex Iafalo, Rasmus Kupari, and a 2024 second-round draft pick. The Kings then signed Dubois to an eight-year, $68 million contract with an average annual value of $8.5 million. Dubois was expected to help provide the Kings with a strong core with three solid centers, along with Andre Kobitar and Philip Deneau. And it was hoped he would be the difference in leading the Kings past the first round of the playoffs. Well, Dubois ended up playing mostly on the third line, sometimes the fourth line. He had a significant drop off in his numbers and was seen as one of the biggest disappointments in the NHL this season. And oh, by the way, the Kings lost in the first round of the playoffs again to the Edmonton Oilers. We will examine what went wrong with the season for Peel Dubois. And the story does have a few different layers to it. I think the first question, though, is what did GM Rob Blake of the Kings brain trust see in Pierre-Luc Dubois to make them think that he could be the missing piece for the Kings? At the time, Dubois was 24 years old, still approaching his prime, six foot four, 225 pounds, good size to take on defenders and win board battles. He was going into his seventh NHL season was coming off back-to-back seasons where he scored nearly 30 goals and 60 points each season. Not spectacular, but very solid numbers. However, there was also some warning signs about his brief career. The Columbus Blue Jackets drafted Pierre-Luc Dubois in the first round, third overall in 2016. Before his fourth season in the NHL, he signed a two-year $10 million extension and then asked to be traded. He was benched twice in the span of the first four games of the season, before being traded along with a third-round pick to the Winnipeg Jets for Patrick Laine and Jack Roslovic. In parts of three seasons in Winnipeg, uh, he made it clear, while being a pretty productive player, that he had no intentions of signing a contract extension with the Jets once he became a restricted free agent, and it would be in their best interest to trade him, which they eventually did, to the Los Angeles Kings. While any player joining a third team in a span of six seasons would seem alarming, The argument could be made that, well, Columbus was a bad team and has never been really a great organization, and you can understand why a young player might not want to play there. As for Winnipeg, if you look at the list of places that most NHL players would rather not play, Winnipeg would be pretty high up on that list. It's very cold and not a lot to do there, so okay, I guess you can't blame a player for wanting to play in a place of his choosing. So the Jets worked out a deal to send him to L.A., and what happens? He gets a big contract. He's living in a big city, a place of his choosing. He joins a team that's made the playoffs the two previous seasons. Seemed to be uh, a great situation for Pierre-Luc Dubois. He had always put up pretty good numbers in places where he apparently wasn't all that happy. So imagine what he could do in a place where he was happy and signs a big contract and is on a pretty good team. This was the optimistic spin on things. When PLD arrived in L.A., Everyone was saying the right things. GM Rob Blake said, Pierre-Luc Dubois, quote, Pierre-Luc Dubois is an excellent two-way center with a unique skill set. We're excited to have him join the organization and commit to us long-term. Over the last few seasons, he has proven his ability to contribute to all facets of the game, and we are thrilled to be able to add a player of this caliber to our lineup. As for what Pierre-Luc Dubois said, 
about joining the LA Kings. He said, quote, I look at the organization, I look at the players, the whole roster, the staff and everybody, and I see the opportunity. And that's something that really, really excited me from the start when we saw that LA could be an option. To be able to play in a city of LA was also something that really excited me. Eight years is a long time, but there's absolutely no doubt in my mind this is a great decision. This is the right decision for me to make, end quote. So everything seemed great. Uh, but looking back now, I have to question, what was the plan with Pierre-Luc Dubois? Rob Blake had to have talked with then head coach Todd McClellan, not to get his approval on bringing in a player, but to talk to him about how Pierre-Luc Dubois was going to be used, how he felt he fit in with the team. Ultimately, it is the coach's responsibility to make the players he has to work with in his system better. But in hindsight, I don't know what the actual plan was with Pierre-Luc Dubois. I assumed going into the season that PLD was going to be slotted in as the team's second-line center and that Philip Deneau would be the third-line center. But that was never the case. I get that Deneau is a veteran and he has been established with the team. And But when you pay a guy $8.5 million, um, you're not playing him to be a bottom six forward. He, you're paying him to be a top six forward where he's been most of his career. But that never really happened. Other than a couple of games when Deneau got hurt, PLD played mostly on the third line with guys like rookie Alex LaFerriere and role players like Jared Anderson Dolan. To be fair to PLD, joining a new team with a new system, with new teammates, he wasn't exactly put in the greatest position to succeed. Shouldn't the Kings have known, though, that based on his history, that he was the type of player you were going to have to cater to. Shouldn't they have realized at some point during the season they were using him or they were not using him in the best way to get the most out of him? And shouldn't they have made an adjustment at some point in the season to at least see how he would perform over a period of time playing with better line mates and in a position where he got more ice time? I would say they should have known that or they should have realized that, but it never seemed like they did. I realized that they were battling for a playoff spot and their head coach, Todd McClellan at the time, was in a position where he was trying to keep his job. But it still seems like for the betterment of the team and for the betterment of Pierre-Luc Dubois, they should have made some sort of adjustment, but they never did. And I think that's on the Kings. However, as a longtime broadcaster for the LA Kings, Jim Fox pointed out in our recent interview with him, when you pay someone $8.5 million, that player should make other players around him better and shouldn't need better players around him to make him better. And that's 100% true. While what, you know, the line PLD played on and who he played with didn't contribute to him uh, having a great season, uh, there were also clearly times when Pierre-Luc Dubois didn't put out the required effort to do his part and be the best player that he could be. It wasn't just the eye test. The numbers showed that as well in Pierre-Luc Dubois' Last two seasons in Winnipeg, he had 28 and 27 goals and 60 and 63 points. Last season, in his first season with the LA Kings, he had 16 goals and 40 points. And you'd be hard-pressed to come up with more than a handful of games where it felt like he really contributed to a Kings win. The Kings should have recognized what kind of player Pierre-Luc Dubois was and committed to putting him in the best position to succeed. And Pierre-Luc Dubois should have wanted to repay the Kings for their commitment to him and their investment in him. They didn't, and he didn't. And the result was what we saw, a very disappointing season from a player that an organization has invested a lot in, and it's been one of the bigger disasters individually in the NHL this season. So what are the options for the Kings with Pierre-Luc Dubois now? It may not be as easy as you might think. I'll explain that more next here on Locked on LA Kings, your team, every day. It is playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. Unfortunately, we can't place any bets on the LA Kings, LA Lakers, or LA Clippers, but you could always bet against those teams that eliminate them, like the Oilers, Nuggets, and Mavericks. Uh, and hey, Dodgers, 
fans, uh, you know they're in first place and one of the favorites to win it all. It's still a great time of the year to be a sports fan, and it can be even more fun by winning with FanDuel. You can bet on who will win or lose and things like how many home runs Shohei Otani will hit this season. You can do it all with FanDuel. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, so what are the options when it comes to Pierre-Luc Dubois? Well, the Kings can swallow hard, have faith that with a better commitment from him, which PLD says he's going to have, and by putting him in a better position, a top six role, he can at least return to the near 30 goal, 60 point per season numbers that he's put up for most of his career. But that would be putting a lot of faith in a player that hasn't seemed to earn it. Now, the Kings could trade him pay a significant part of his salary to get a team to take him, maybe get something in return and just get that contract off their books. But they would have to do that before his no movement clause kicks in after next season. If they don't, he cannot be traded without his permission for the rest of the contract or the Kings could buy out his contract. That option is one that plenty of Kings fans on social media and even pundits across the NHL have suggested the team has to do, but it has some potential issues. I'll explain in a moment, but let's just start with the assumption the Kings want to buy out Pierre-Luc Dubois' contract. What does that actually mean? Well, basically, the Kings would pay Pierre Dubois a certain amount of money to not play for them, and he would join another team as a free agent. It's not uncommon for players to get bought out, usually, though, in the final year or years of their contract. I think the last time the Kings bought out a player, it was defenseman Dion Phaneuf, and it was just for the final year of his contract. It's almost unheard of, and I don't know what the precedent is to buy out a player after year one of an eight-year deal. So how does it work? Well, an NHL team can buy out a player's contract for one-third of the remaining amount if the player is younger than 26 years old. If the player is 26 or older, It's two-thirds of the remaining amount. The buyout amount for each year counts towards the team's salary cap, and that figure is spread out over twice the number of years remaining on the contract. So if the Kings were to buy out PLD, they would be paying him for the next 14 years. That's twice the remaining number of years left on the contract, which is now seven after he played for the first year of the contract last season. By the way, They would be paying Pierre-Luc Dubois through the 2037-38 season. It appears that that would be one of the longest buyouts in NHL history. The New York Islanders bought out goalie Rick DiPietro, and they are paying him over 16 years. Philadelphia Flyers bought out goalie Ilya Brzgalov. They're paying him over 14 years. And the Buffalo Sabres bought out defenseman Christian Erhoff. They're paying him over 14 years. Now, I'm not going to list off the year-by-year totals of what it would be if the Kings were to buy him out. Um, But according to capfriendly.com, which by the way is an amazing site for anyone interested in contracts and team salary cap numbers, if Dubois was bought out for one third of the remaining amount, he would get as low as 1.5 million and as high as 3.82 million over the next seven years per year. Then he would get 1.13 million for the final seven years of the deal not to play for the Kings. The total cost would be just under $16 million, but it would save the Kings $31.6 million for them not to have to pay that contract. Now, if they do buy him out before he turns 26, that's if they buy him out before he turns 26. Now, after he turns 26, that they buy him out, it goes from one third to two thirds of the remaining amount. So the savings is not nearly as digestible if they were to buy him out after he turns 26. So if the Kings intend to buy him out, they need to do it before he turns 26. And that's where things get very interesting. The Kings can't buy him out until this season ends and the buyout window opens. If the Stanley Cup Finals go seven games, the season would end on June the 24th. Pierre-Luc Dubois' 26th birthday is June the 24th. It is possible the Kings will not be able to buy him out for one-third of his remaining contract. So the question is, do you think that Pierre Dubois 
put in a better situation with better teammates and with a better effort on his part can return to the numbers he had before the Kings traded for him and sustain that over most of the next seven seasons. I would say it's possible, but I'm not confident that that's going to happen. So it comes down to a risk versus reward situation. And I don't think he's worth the risk. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. And even if he does get back on track, best case scenario, right? He gets back to his career averages. Is he really a great player? Is he a difference maker? I can't see him as anything but a pretty good player, a solid contributor. But you don't pay solid contributors $8.5 million per season. You pay a guy like that to be a difference maker, to make others around him better, to be one of the core pieces of your organization. And I don't have faith that Pierre-Luc Dubois can be that player. So the smart play is to buy him out and hope the season ends before his 26th birthday. So if the Kings decide to not buy him out, which they've indicated they are not looking to do, and they don't trade him, then what? We'll talk about next, that next here on Lockdown LA Kings, your team every day. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide for your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for a million dollars in coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Life insurance may not be something you're thinking about, but you should because you never know what can happen in life. Be responsible and be ready. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies, and their team of licensed experts are on hand to help talk you through it. Your work life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. Even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. Policy Genius never gives you unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team. I should say they always give you unbiased advice. Uh, they have no incentive to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. They have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click on the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Well, Kings GM Rob Blake said in his season-ending press conference, if the Kings, or he was asked if the Kings would buy out Pierre-Luc Dubois' contract, he answered it quickly and decisively, saying no. Now, does that mean the Kings aren't going to buy out PLD? Well, not necessarily. I mean, Blake could change his mind. He could be overruled. Um, and it's also, you know, like he wasn't under oath. Uh, it's not like GMs, coaches, and players haven't at times been less than truthful with the media. Um, and he wasn't asked, would Pierre-Luc Dubois be traded? Now, there were rumors that PLD was part of a trade to acquire goalie Linus Olmark from Boston at the trade deadline, but that Olmark shot down the deal because he had a no-trade clause and didn't want to come out west. Now, I have no idea if that was just a rumor or if that deal actually was in place, but... Um, there are options for the Kings to possibly explore a trade. As I mentioned, it would mean them having to retain a significant portion of his salary, but maybe they could get something in return. And maybe that would be more palatable than the option of a buyout. Now, if the Kings do decide to stay the course and keep Dubois, they have to play him in the top six next season. Now, in hockey and in sports, you're supposed to earn your playing time. And the fact that Dubois really hasn't earned that spot, frankly, it doesn't matter. And if you keep him, then that's what they're going to have to do. He has proven to me that this past season, he's incapable of being the player that they need him to be playing in a bottom six role. So you're going to have to play him, whether he's earned it or not, in the top six. And he's shown in the past, in his other stops, when he's in a top six role, he can be a productive player. Now, how will that go over in the locker room with his teammates, giving him basically a position that he hasn't earned? Well, probably not great, but too bad. Uh, the other players on the team 
are going to have to deal with it because again, to get what you need out of him, I believe you have to put him in a top six role. So that would include most likely Philip Deneau moving down to the third line center position. I have no doubt that Philip Deneau being the pro that he is will take that situation, probably not be happy about it, but do what he's always done. And that is perform at a high level, give it everything he's got. And again, be a professional. Uh, that's what I would expect out of Philip uh, Deneau. Um, now, this is actually another reason why the Kings should probably get rid of Pierre-Luc Dubois because it's not a great situation when you're using salary and an investment made in a player as to have that dictate where he plays and how much he plays. Um, but again, if the Kings are going to keep him, I think they have to play him in that position and they have to just deal with any fallout that comes with that. Now I have faith that the locker room is strong enough with guys like Andre Kopitar and Drew Doughty to be able to handle it. Um, there are situations that happen in all sports on all teams where there are internal issues with personalities or playing time or whatever. And again, you just have to handle those things. Sometimes those things are out of your control and you can only deal with what you deal with, and that is playing your position uh, and doing the best you can with who you're you know, out there on the ice with. So it isn't the greatest situation in the world. I've said before, I think the Kings should move on from Pierre-Luc Dubois. But again, if you're going to take Rob Blake at his word, if they are not going to buy him out, if they are not going to trade him, if they are going to stay the course, then you have to put him in the best situation possible and that means playing him in a top six role. So if the Kings decide not to do that, I think they get exactly what they had from Pierre-Luc Dubois this past season. And that is a player that isn't uh, performing up to the level of his salary, isn't being a difference maker on the team, and is just another guy on the roster. And uh, that obviously isn't what the LA Kings are looking for out of Pierre-Luc Dubois. Uh, we do have some PLD news as he and Team Canada were in action earlier today at the IHF World Championships in Czechia as Canada blew a big lead and then needed overtime to beat Austria 7-6. to six. Now, Pierre-Luc Dubois did have a goal. He also had the primary assist on the overtime game winner, although to be fair, he just basically left the puck in the neutral zone for John Tavares, who picked it up and skated in and scored. Uh, PLD played 14 minutes and 5 seconds in that game. He had 21 shifts. He was a plus 2 and did not have any penalty minutes. So through three games in the tournament, Pierre-Luc Dubois has two goals and two assists for four points. Obviously, Canada has a better roster than most of the teams are going to be facing, and so far the competition hasn't been very tough. But at least he has looked pretty good and put up some decent numbers. And that's a lot better than the alternative of him going there and not doing anything. So some positives around, around Pierre-Luc Dubois playing in the World Championships. At this point, we're looking for anything to be positive when it comes to PLD. So we'll take what we can get. So far, so good for him at the World Championships. Hopefully, this is a indication that maybe, just maybe, he can turn into the player that the LA Kings expected him to be this past season. But that's still, we're looking at the silver lining right now. We're looking for positive things. And it is positive, but we'll see. Uh, by the way, Sweden and Switzerland uh, did not play on Tuesday in the World Championship, so we have no update on how Adrian Kempe, Carl Grundstrom, and Kevin Fiala did as they are also taking part in that event. All right, so for you everydayers, those of you that listen to watch Locked LA Kings every day, coming up on Wednesday, friend of the show, Russell Morgan from Hockey Royalty is going to stop by. We'll talk all about Pierre-Luc Dubois. We'll talk about Rob Blake. He was at uh, Russell Morgan was at the end of the season press conference. We'll get his thoughts on what the mood was like there, what he uh, what he heard from the Kings uh, brain trust and how he feels about the team going forward. Uh, coming up on Friday, of course, we'll have another fan feedback show. Get your thoughts on the Kings offseason. Who should their next head coach be? What do you do with Pierre-Luc Dubois? All that and more. Whatever's on your mind, you can send an email to Locked on Eddie. Uh, that is uh, Locked on Eddie at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E. Uh, and you can always leave your comments in the YouTube section if you're watching on YouTube. We appreciate those comments as they always help out the algorithm uh, and uh, help the show be discovered. We also would love you to stay interactive with the show on social media, X, Twitter, and Instagram. We are at Locked On 
LA Kings. Thank you as always for listening and watching this episode of Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast, your team every day. Have a great rest of your day. We will talk to you tomorrow. And as always, go Kings go.